Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and this one I think is going to be a part of my relationship series. It's about the menopause, and there is not just female menopause, there is male menopause too, but we're talking about the female menopause because it's been in the news recently. Channel 4 has actually got a new menopausal policy in force, which is recognising um, women who are going through the menopause and they're do making um, special arrangements for them. It's ironic because when you think about people in the caring industry, like in the health service, they haven't acknowledged that and it's predominantly women. But, you know, I think that is because people in the caring service, like nurses and doctors and things like that, you know, their needs are secondary. So they just get on with it. They just get on with uh, all those symptoms that people going through the menopause endure. So anyway, let me just go through this. Um, what are the symptoms? I mean, they used to be, it used to be stigma. People just didn't even talk about it. So now it's on all over the news and everything. But anyway, menopause. And it's, I think it's interesting that men should know about the symptoms because, you know, sometimes... Women, and this can happen to women between 40 and 55, round about there. So it would help men understand why their female, why their partners may be unresponsive, um, unresponsive may be moody, might not want to have sex, might be, you know, have, you know, and then they're sweating and all that kind of stuff. So it will help a man understand, especially in relationships. They might just think, oh, my wife's gone off me. And also, when men are going through the menopause, they go through a lot of changes as well. It's the same kind of time frame. Mostly with men, though, they start wanting sports cars. They start looking for younger women. They start wanting to have an affair. They, you know, they're moody. They start over drinking or smoking. They think that they've lost their use. They're trying to make themselves more attractive. You know, they, they overcompensate for stuff. And they tend to kind of just be, you know, they get bored at everything. They, look, look, they lose interest. So male, they do have the male menopause. But the female, because they don't have the sweating and the physical, the obvious physical signs, sometimes it's kind of dismissed or swept under the carpet. But their changes, because their testosterone levels um, reduce, so it, they, they have changes as well, but the females' um, hormone levels, because they change so drastically, it's more visible, the sweats and all that. And I think the sweating is the most visible because some people, they say, you know, they've had to take their clothes off. Their, their clothes are soaking wet. I personally never went through the menopause. I went through um, forced menopause. I was in America and I went to a clinic because I had a pain in my in my side. And they said I had a suspected cyst on my ovaries. So they said, seeing as you're 40, we might as well take your ovaries out. I didn't know. the No, they asked me if I wanted any more children. And I thought, well, I've got my kids already. So I don't want any more. But I didn't realise the implication at the time, if you see what I mean. But anyway, they took out my ovaries. So I immediately went into menopause but they put me on hrt hormone replacement therapy so i didn't get none of the sweats i didn't get none of the symptoms you know i didn't lose my sex drive or anything like that but when i came back to the uk um the uk because they had a scare about cancer and um breast you know breast problems and stuff like that they wouldn't they wouldn't continue the prescription of HRT. So I had to come off it. But I don't remember anything really changing. I, it's not as if all of a sudden I went into a menopause, menopausal state. I didn't. It was almost like I skipped that stage. But anyway, let me tell you a bit about the menopause for the men who don't know. And for the females who can identify with this, or if, you, if you're if you not there yet, to know what to expect. Um, in, the, in women, the first sign is that periods become less frequently. Um, 
if you're taking birth control, that can be confusing. And some people get um, pregnant during the menopause. I know my mother did, and I've got a Down syndrome brother. Because if you have, if you get pregnant during the menopause, there's something um, about that that they can either tell you if you have a Down syndrome or not. They did tell my mum she was going to have a Down syndrome, but she still wanted to have him. But that that is because when you when you don't see your periods regularly, you can't really gauge when you're fertile from when you're not. And so that's what happens. You end up um, pregnant. So quite a few people get pregnant in the menopause. So the first sign is infrequent periods. Um, people get pregnant. Oh, I've already said that. Um, sometimes periods can just stop suddenly. For others, it can take months or years to finally cease. Um, menopause is a natural sign of aging, usually occurs between 45 and 55, but could be earlier. If it comes earlier, because some people get menopausal in their 40s, they call it premature menopause. Um, the woman's estrogen levels decline, and around 100 women experience menopause before 40 years old. 100 women, that's not really that much. So it's not a common thing. Um, some women experience quite severe menopausal symptoms, hot flushes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, difficulty sleeping, low mood, depression, reduced sex drive, problems with memory and, constant, and concentration. And like I said, that can affect relationships if the partner isn't aware what's going on. Sometimes the woman isn't even aware because it's not like you're thinking, oh, this is time for my menopause. You're not. You're going on as normal, but you just notice that your disposition has changed. You're not as happy. You're not as excited. You're, you're a bit apathetic. You don't really bother about anything. You don't want to do anything with your partner. You don't want to have sex and all that kind of stuff. And you might just think, oh, well, I'm going through a phase. And you're not really aware that you're going through the menopause. It's not until people actually get those sweats that they think, oh, I must be going through the menopause. But before that, a lot of people don't know. So if your woman is behaving a bit strange and different, don't chastise her. Don't think she's fancying someone else or she's gone off you. You can suggest that she goes to a GP. A GP will take a blood sample and they can tell her hormone levels if they've dropped. So and then they'll be able to see whether or not she's going through the menopause. And it can help men in particular have a little bit more understanding and patience with the partners. Um, what else? Oh, I've done all that. Let me see. Channel 4 is launching its first menopause policy. And actually, the 18th of October was menopause day. Honestly, what next? I mean, is that really, really necessary? No. Anyway, um, I'll be back. <laughs> Channel 4 is launching its first menopause policy in an effort to normalise the taboo subject. Women will have flexible working arrangements and a cool and quiet workspace. The policy will support employees experiencing menopausal symptoms, such as hot flushes, anxiety and fatigue, giving women access to flexible working arrangements and paid leave if they feel unwell of the side because of the side effects. I don't think too many employers will be happy about that. Another reason to say we don't want the older generation at work. They're taking too much time off. But I always say you get people on maternity, young people, and they have time off. So you can't discriminate. The strategy which Channel 4 says is the first known amongst UK media companies will offer staff a private call and quiet workspace, a workplace assessment to ensure that the environment is not worsening their symptoms and a range of support and guidance resources. The broadcaster hopes to end the stigma about the menopause by encouraging better understanding of it among staff. So they've got a World Menopause Day. I didn't think that there was a stigma about menopause. I just think there's a lack of understanding. It's not like... Yeah, it's not like people... It's not like it's a taboo subject. I think it's something that women tend to talk to women about. 
But I think there's a lack of understanding more than it being taboo. As a part of the policy, Channel 4 will also introduce menopause awareness briefings to its leadership teams and its HR team now has a dedicated menopause champion. I mean, I think that's a bit overkill. But hey, who am I? I didn't go through it, so I probably I need to be probably be a little bit more sympathetic or empathetic because I, I do know some people suffer through it. But I just think, you know, out of the blue, I mean, it's been going on for so many years and only now somebody's come up with the idea that these women need support. I think that's quite shameful, actually. Because these women have been really suffering, you know, with those sweats in particular. Apparently, some people, they can't even sleep. And when they go to bed, their bed is soaked. Oh, that must be so uncomfortable. Anyway, the Channel 4's in-house gender equality staff network is called Four Women. The number four and women is responsible for the policy and will continue to offer support along with the mental health employee network for mind number four and the word mind jane english a co-chair of four women said we wanted to open up the conversation at channel four and in doing so prompt the media industry to start talking more about how they can better support women transitioning through menopause and the thing is even at my workplace now all i'm now i'm seeing everything menopause menopause leaflets about menopause what happened before then i mean does it take it to be put on tv for individuals to recognise that women have been having issues and problems with menopause. I think it's absolutely, honestly, it's just a bit contrived because how come all of a sudden you're so concerned about people whether or not they're going through the menopause and this has been going on for years? But I think I'm glad it's being addressed. I have to say that I am glad it's being addressed. According to research this year from the human resource company Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development, 59% of women in the workplace who experience menopausal symptoms say, they have say that it has a negative impact on their work. So, you know, everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon. The fashion industry already has now doing special clothes for menopausal women before when we're looking on the TV it's all for young women. Now they've got an now they've got a legitimate excuse to cater for women of a certain age. They're coming out with high-tech clothing, skincare products that claim to help with hot flushes. Fashion advice for those experiencing symptoms of menopause, particularly hot flushes, has really ventured beyond wearing light, loose layers. Now, however, several brands are developing clothes with technology designed for menopausal women. Why now? Why didn't they do it before? It's not a new thing. You must have women in industry, in the fashion industry, who, who knew that women were suffering and needed lighter clothes. And why didn't they say anything? Or did they need a chan Channel 4 to tell them what's needed? Because that's what it looks like. They needed to be told what to do. They needed that some kind of authority to endorse what they already knew. An anti-flush nightdress is the best-selling item, which was launched in 2016. Anti-flush nightdress. And this year has seen sales rise by 213%. Whoa, you see? So I'll take that back. They have been doing something since 2016, so it's not it's not as a result of the Channel 4. Um, another brand of clothing uh, sells garments made using volcanic mineral to help keep the body at an ideal core temperature. And its range includes nightdresses, track pants and pyjamas. The slogan, cool clothes for hot woman, says its technology ensures heat is taken away from the body and stored and released back when the body begins to cool down. 
that's a store called 51 Apparel. They've come out with that new technology, that new slogan. There are garments that use certified space technology material originally developed by NASA, NASA that regulates temperature using a method of micro encapsulation where the phase change materials are enclosed in a polymer shell and they are not aimed just at those experiencing night sweats. It's not just fashion that is embracing the menopausal market. The beauty, interest, the beauty industry is also getting in on the act with hot flash cooling mist. Is it a gimmick? Well, it definitely needs attention. So even if it is and it works, good. Um, I think with menopause, it just takes common sense. You need to be cool. You need somebody around you who's empathetic, who understands what you're going through, that kind of thing. And you need to be patient with yourself. And you don't have to think the world is coming to an end just because you're going through the menopause. And that goes for men too. Life isn't going to come to an end. You don't have to feel old. It's, it's the, all it is is a stage, a pause. They call it menopause. They, I, don't, I wonder why they never call it woman woman pause woman a pause i wonder why they never call it woman a pause i wonder why they call it men a pause very very strange i guess i bet you men had it first anyway um, every woman's experience is unique so any stereotyping is problematic because they're what they're saying now is transgenders and binary. How do they do they go through the menopause? Or will they go through the menopause? They're quite young now, but what will happen when they reach 45 and 50? The male menopause involves a drop in test te I was I always get tongue tied with this word, testosterone production in men who are age 50 or older. It's often affiliated with hypogondad hypogonadism. Gosh, they've got such complicated words for such a simple thing. Both conditions involve lowered testosterone levels and similar symptoms. If you're a man, testosterone is a hormone produced in your testes. It does more than fuel your sex drive. And they can give testosterone to women. Testosterone to women. And apparently it's supposed to increase her sex drive but you know there are side effects and not every woman can have it and one of those side effects is growing facial hair so you don't want a woman with a beard or do you a midlife crisis can be linked to menopause it is a transition of identity and self-confidence that can occur in middle-aged individuals to pick typically 45 to 64 years old so that midlife crisis goes on for a longer period of time but it does happen during the menopausal period time frame wanting a flashy car wearing hair pieces you know these men that put that little bit in and flip it all over the other side when they're bald in the middle i can't stand seeing that i think they would be much better off not having any hair at all rather than get a long let it grow long hair and then swishing it all the way over but anyway if it makes him feel comfortable so be it. And plus, they've got so many new technologies now. They don't even, I don't even think you see many men with that anymore. So maybe they are dealing with the new technology. I can't tell when last, apart from in old films, I've seen a man that has that long bit and swishes it over. So maybe they are doing the transplant, the hair transplant. Um, flirting, considering having an affair, seeking younger partners, becoming nostalgic, always thinking about the past, what they used to do, how they used to do it, who they used to do it with, where they used to go. Tattoos, that's another part of the midlife crisis, especially when you're having a tattoo, when you're 45 to 50 to 60, it's your first tattoo. Going to the disco, wearing unflattering clothes to make you look young. They call it mutton dressed as lamb. Um, overly conscious about appearance or conversely losing interest in your appearance. Easily bored, often saying I can't be bothered. Depression, negative talk. Noticing aches and pains more. Being overly self-critical. Believing the best years are behind you. 
regretting lost opportunities, self-blame for failures, abuse of substances like alcohol or tobacco, thinking that you're too old, thinking that you're not going to get into a relationship. You stop caring about your health, your home, your work. Some people stop caring about their hygiene. Loss of interest in sex could all be signs that you're going through midlife crisis or the menopause. <sighs> Let me see what this is. don't know what that says. The thing about cliches, though, is most are based on fact. In this case, the facts are staggering. More than half of respondents to a poll, a poll on notmuch.com, a website produced by Wisconsin Public Radio, said that the midlife crisis is very real gut-wrenchingly depressing experience that we all go through at one time or another. Does this mean that the man in your life is suffering through a midlife crisis of his own? Not necessarily, but there are symptoms to the midlife crisis and what you can do about them. So I've already put that. I'll put the link in there just in case you want to know what you can do about the midlife crisis. But actually, you go on Google. Google is the answer to our prayers and it will tell you all the answers. So, I hope that was helpful. Bye-bye.